afternoon. Welcome to our spring concert entitled Inspiration. My name is Mark Buchanan. I am the president of the North Oakland Concert Band as well as a member of the trumpet section. We are very excited today to present and feature two very talented young students who have won our concerto competition for this year. We will introduce them to you later in the program. And we are also very grateful, as well as excited, to have Dr. Pamela Klemma as our guest conductor today, and more about her in just a moment. For those of you who have attended another concert of ours this year, you know about our full digital program that's available on your smartphone. If you haven't done so already, open the camera on your phone, scan the QR code that's either on the bottom of the printed program or on one of the flyers in the auditorium or in the corner by the door. The digital program has much more content than is printed on the one-page program. In the digital program, you will find a list of performers in the band. We have the biographies of our concerto competition winners and Dr. Klemm. There is information about upcoming concerts and links that will take you directly to our website. You can even quickly make a donation to the band from this program. We hope you will check out the digital program. And speaking of donations, these concerts are not possible without your generous support. It costs us well over $1,000 to put on each of these concerts, and your continued support allows us to keep these concerts free. In addition, we would not be able to offer two students such a generous prize for winning their concerto competition without the support you provide. This concert is just as much a celebration of your generosity and support as it is a performance opportunity for the students. So we have a donation basket in the lobby on the table, or click that link in the digital program, or if you really would like to send something by regular mail, come see me and I'll give you the address. Please make sure you silence your cell phones, but keep them on so you can look at the digital program. Our first piece today is Queen City by W.H. Bruhn. Bruhn is a fairly obscure composer, and Queen City is probably his only known piece. Bourne was a, a tuba and string bass player around the Midwest in the 1920s, and he lived and worked in Detroit as a boiler operator. The city referred to by the title Queen City was probably Cincinnati, Ohio, although no one is quite sure. Now I would like to welcome the conductor of the North Oakland Concert Band, Annette Klein, and ask her to join me here at the microphone. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, this is loud. Um, and it's, I have a loud voice, so. Um, I, you're probably wondering, why are we having a, a guest conductor today? Um, uh, well, I broke my arm, as you can see. And it was about two weeks ago, I was hiking and um, came across a slippery path. Gravity took hold. <laughs> and um, I broke my arm in about three places. I have a nice little titanium plate, so it's nice and strong. I'm just getting used to using it again. So um, I'll be back at the podium um, very soon. But with our, my pleasure, um, I'm so glad, or it's my honor to introduce to you Dr. P Pamela Klenna, who graciously freed up her schedule, I kid you not, to conduct the last two rehearsals and today's concert. She comes highly recommended with her artistry, conducting skills, and wonderful stage presence. Pam is Assistant Professor of Music at Oakland University, where she conducts the Oakland University Symphonic Band. She teaches instrumental music education methods, supervises student teachers, and teaches graduate conducting. Pam holds the Doctor of Musical Arts degree from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, and she earned the Master of Music degree from Central Music Michigan University. She also earned a Bachelor of Music Education from Lee University. Pam's primary research interest is gender diversity. 
among wind band conductors and is committed to furthering study in this field. She currently serves as a present elect of the Woman Band Directors International. You can read more about Pam's many accomplishments within our electronic program. Please welcome to the stage our guest conductor, Dr. Pamela Quinn. Son. Here we go. I'm Robin Myers, and if you don't know me, I'm obviously a member of the flute section, and I'll be your prop program moderator for the rest of today. Are you ready for this next piece? I mean, really, are you ready? <laughs> okay. First, a little bit about the composer G. Bradley Bodine. He was born in 1960, and he was an American composer, educator, and percussionist. And as of 2021, he is currently the music coordinator at the Catholic Center at Purdue and continuing lecturer of music theory at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. The concerto for marimba was commissioned by marimbas Drew Lang, who premiered the orchestral version of the work at the prestigious International Festival Institute at Round Tap under the direction of Edwin Outwater. We are pleased to present this afternoon our first of two youth concerto competition winners, Mr. Peter Houston. Peter has played percussion for seven years and has been under the instruction of Suzanne D'Ambrosio for five of those years and has worked with her to prepare today's concerto. 
He also plays piano and has dabbled with the clarinet and oboe as well. Brave soul. Peter played percussion under our own NOCB director, Annette Klein, at Walden Middle School and is currently playing right here at Lake Orion High School in the wind ensemble under the direction of Mr. Michael Steele. As his skills have improved, Peter has performed with us uh, in the percussion section for uh, the NOCB concerts. And he's played with the Oakland Youth Philharmonia Orchestra and the Michigan Ambassadors Band on a 16-day tour across Europe in 2019. Scholastically, hang on to your socks. Peter leads the National Honor Society as the Vice President. He's the Vice President of the Key Club, member of the MAC National Honor Society, and a straight-A honors and advanced placement student. So basically, he never sleeps. After high school, he will be a U of M student majoring in data science. And now, seriously, buckle up your seatbelts, including the band, as we listen to this driving and virtuosic tour de force on marimba, Peter Houston and director Dr. Pamela Clenot, who helps hold it all together. Kaleidoscope Concerto for Marimba and Band by Bradley Bodine.
we forget, I should say, before I go into the next piece, that doesn't happen without a great support system. And I know one person is with us today, and that is Peter's mom, uh, Christy Houston. She plays trumpet in our trumpet section. Christy, if you could stand. Yeah. And I understand Peter's father and other family members are here. Could you also stand? wherever you may be here. There we go. All right. <laughs> Just think of all the practicing they've heard at their house, all the lessons and so on. So yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> As We Forgive was commissioned by the Anderson High School Bands in Cincinnati, Ohio, under the direction of Toby Biederman. It is an exciting and multifaceted selection normally done in three movements, of which we will present today the first movement of fearful invocation entitled Temptation. As we forgive those who trespass against us, this often spoken line in the Christian faith assumes a forgiveness of each other. In the Jewish faith, specifically on Yom Kippur, one must seek forgiveness of his fellow man before seeking forgiveness of God. Amidst divis divisiveness <laughs> and conflict, anger and pain, hatred and resentment, selfishness and stubbornness, guilt and remorse, forgiveness is possible. This composition, though inspired by the religious text, is not about forgiveness from a higher power, but about reconciliation with one another and with yourself. And now the unforgettably vivid and inspirational musical story as we forgive Temptation by Ryan Nolan. Please welcome Dr. Pamela Glenna back to the stage.
The Best of Overture is an orchestral work composed by Dmitry Shostakovich in 1954, commissioned by the Bolshoi Theater's celebration of the 37th anniversary of the October Revolution. The score has since become one of the most enduring of Shostakovich's occasional scores. The conductor of the Bolshoi Theater realized that he had no appropriate piece to open the high-profile concert. He approached Shostakovich, who was at the time a musical consultant at the Bolshoi, and with only three days to meet the deadline, Shostakovich agreed to provide an appropriate work and immediately began to compose the festive overture. Within an hour, Nevelson began to send couriers to the composer's apartment, no pressure, to pick up the score page by completed page, who then took them to the Bolshoi's music copyist in order to prepare the parts for the performance. The rousing piece tested Shostakovich again in 1962, and after seeing Stravinsky conduct it, Shostakovich told his colleagues that the podium tempted him, but he said, I, I don't know how to not be afraid. Nevertheless, when Shostakovich received an offer to conduct his overture and a cello concerto a few months later, he agreed. <laughs> and before the first rehearsal, his nerves were so frayed that he persuaded the cello soloist to help him polish off a half liter of vodka. <laughs> Even though the concert went over well, Shostakovich never conducted again. That's why there's bars on the podium here. <laughs> Although written in haste, the overture has proven to be one of Shostakovich's most frequently performed works. The NLCB performs for you now Festive Overture by Dmitry Shostakovich.
musician, composer, and arranger. Lucy was raised in Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania, and studied music at an early age, learning to play cornet, violin, and piano. He was a uh, cornetist for local and regional bands until he suffered from lip paralysis, which forced him to switch to trombone and euphonium and limited him to smaller theater performances. Starting in 1902, Mr. Lucy composed and arranged music for Carl Fisher and became editor-in-chief of the Vandersloot Music Publishing Company. In 1919, Thomas Edison selected Lucy to be the music advisor for Edison's Phonograph Company. He was also approached by Henry Ford to arrange music for the Ford Orchestra in Detroit. Frank Lucy is credited with over 400 compositions and 2,500 arrangements, including his most recognized composition. Please welcome Dr. Pamela Klenna back to the stage as we perform Gloria by Frank Hoyt Lucy.
concertino was composed for trombone and orchestra by Ferdinand David, who was a virtuoso violinist and composer. David was born in the same house in Hamburg where renowned composer Felix Mendelssohn had been born the previous year. While David was making concert tours by the age of 19, Mendelssohn had promised Karl Turgot Kieser, a young trombone virtuoso, that he would write a trombone concerto for him, but he never had time to do so. Well, Ferdinand David, his good friend, and by now concertmaster of the Leipzig Orchestra, finished what Mendelssohn had initially set out to do with the completion of his concerto for trombone and orchestra. To play it for you this afternoon, the NOCB has the distinct pleasure of presenting our second of two youth concerto competition winners, Mackenzie Barber. She is a senior at Holly High School and has played trombone for seven years under the direction of Ben Baldwin. Involved in various music ensembles, Mackenzie has played trombone in symphony and jazz band, tuba in concert band, snare drum on Holly's indoor percussion line, and tenor saxophone and percussion in the school's musical pit orchestras. So she's 24-7 music. <laughs> she is a leader in her own right, as she has served as a section leader for her, um, in her junior year, and uh, she, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. She's, oh, drum major of the Halley Marching Band in her senior year. So outside of school, Mackenzie continues to share her musical talents as a member of the Oakland Youth Symphony Orchestra and has played trombone and euphonium in the Oakland University Youth Brass Band. She's also rehearsed and performed with OU, trombone ensemble, and in 2021, was a part of the Central Michigan University Honors Band. She's earned top ratings in solo and ensemble events, and in 2022 and 23, she um, uh, was selected as the MSBOA All-State Band. In 2022, she competed in the solo competition at the North American Brass Band Association Championship and won, and won second place in the Youth Low Brass Technical Division. In this, her senior year, she was nominated and competed in the MSBOA Outstanding Soloist Competition and was also nominated for the Spring Festival Honors Orchestra. Helping her achieve these outstanding musical milestones is Dr. Kenneth Crushy, her private music instructor out of Oakland University. And after graduation, after all that, she plans to do a double major in music education and performance at University of Michigan so she can pass on her musical gifts to the next generation. This is another buckle up moment as we welcome the amazingly talented Mackenzie Barber to perform concertino or concert band and trombone by Ferdinand David, led by Dr. Pam.
recognition of your performance today, we like to give you this plaque. In addition, uh, we have a check for we have a check for one thousand dollars. She is also attending the University of Michigan, so it'll come in handy in the fall. <laughs> We would also like to recognize Mackenzie's support system. We understand her family is here today, so if you're in the audience, could you please stand? Very right there. There you go. <laughs> and we're not sure if any of her music instructors were here this afternoon. If you are in the audience, please stand as well. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> we wish both our concerto winners the best of luck in the rest of their lives. We know that you brightened ours. Henry V was a, a 1989 British historical drama film adapted for the screen based on William Shakespeare's play of the same name about King Henry V of England. The film starred Kenneth Branagh in the title role with Paul Schofield, Emma Thompson, Judi Dench, and Christian Bale, and many others in supporting roles. The movie is set in 1415 and follows King Henry V of England as he leads his army into battle against France during the Hundred Year War. Along the way, he struggles with the sinking morale of his troops and his own inner doubts. As the composer of music for well-known movies like Bridget Jones' Diary, Sense and Sensibility, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Patrick Doyle had already made a name for himself. And with the song, Nanobi Stomine, from the film Henry V, Doyle received the 1989 Ivor Novello Award for Best Film Theme. In close cooperation with the film composer, Johann Demai selected the best material from Doyle's 15 compositions for the movie for this particular arrangement that you're about to hear with the unison song Nobis Domine as a touching finale. The translation for the text you will hear is not to us, Lord, not to us, but give glory to your name. Fun fact, the film composer Patrick Doyle actually appeared in the film as the first soldier to begin singing Non Nobis Domine following the battle at Agincourt, which concludes the movie. So I guess I know what you'll be doing after is renting Henry V to look for him. <laughs> we present the musical suite from the 1989 film Henry V, arranged by Johann Demai. Please welcome Dr. Pamela Klenna back to the stage.
walk around the movie. <laughs> you didn't know we could sing, did you? <laughs> it is hard to listen to this next piece without imagining the cartoon antics of Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd in the famous barbershop on Saturday morning cartoon lineups. In all seriousness, The Barber of Seville was a fiasco in its 1816 Rome premiere. It was a series of disasters, probably because the work was quickly thrown together in 13 days and under-rehearsed. Rossini started it, drawing derision from appearing at the conductor's podium in an unfashionable brown jacket and gaudy gold buttons. And then you had a singer who tripped on the trap door and had to sing his first aria with a bloody nose. And during the first act finale, a cat wandered onto the stage and attacked one of the singers. <laughs> yeah, the rest was disrupted by riots of angry fans. Just the type of audience we always look for. Okay, so Rossini, <laughs> he feigned illness for the second performance. But with the opening night rioters absent, second nighters were able to hear the brilliant music and arias and immediately realized that they were present at a great masterpiece. Today, it is Rossini's best known work and one of the world's greatest comic operas, minus the cats. As we conclude today's concert, we want to thank you, our patrons and supporters, for sharing these musical moments with us. We thank you for your past, present, and hopefully future donations, which make programs and concerto competitions like this possible. We hope to see you at our next concert entitled Movie Night on Tuesday, June 13th at 7 p.m. at the Wildwood Amphitheater, featuring music from Avatar, Star Trek, Aladdin, and of course, feature pieces by composer John Williams. Keep in touch with us by joining our mailing list and visiting our website and Facebook pages. And we so definitely want to thank Dr. Pam Kleiner for filling in for Annette Klein. Thank you, thank you so much. It was a huge mouthful to undertake in only a few weeks. We conclude with the overture from Rossini's Arbor of Seville.